Hey, Jalen, obviously you've played a lot of basketball over the course of your career, but the SEC experience is new to you. Just what have you, what have you made of playing in the SEC so far and what adjustments have you had to make, if any, to your game? Um, it's not too different, man. Honestly, you know, with, like you said, I played a lot of basketball. Conference play is always a monster, man. Every single night is going to be a war. And, you know, you're going to get everybody's best shot no matter how high up or down you are on the totem. And, you know, with our record, teams are always going to take their best shot at us. So just, you know, continuing to grow along and just the quick turnarounds is really what I've made so far. Just the Wednesday, Saturday, as opposed to, you know, coming from a mid-major Thursday, Saturdays, Friday, Sundays. It's really like, honestly, what you make out kind of what the NBA schedule is a little bit because you got to get right back on off the road and you don't really have the days off that you might have at a smaller school. And, you know, you got to get right back to the work, get to the next scout report, man, and straight into prep for the next game every single time. Definitely a different turnaround. Bob. Uh, hey, hey Jalen, how you doing? Good, um, yeah, I know two games. I don't know if that constitutes much of a streak, but you guys won nine or now you lost back-to-back -back conference games. Um, and, and Eric, you know, Musselman had said after Auburn that they looked at that kind of a must-win because of the schedule you guys had coming up, all the tough games. Um, what's the team's mindset? Does this Georgia game almost have a must-win feel? Because, you know, the next two are at Alabama and LSU. Uh, the mindset we have as a team is that every game is a must win. You know, we don't go into any game thinking that we can drop one or we can take anybody light. Every single game is a must win. And, you know, it with the two-game losing streak, it constitutes a little more, but we still got to go out there and stick to our purposes. You know, we have to play with desperation on every single night, no matter if we're winning nine games in a row or if we're losing two or three in a row. You know, so the losing streak doesn't constitute any more. Winning is still what we want to do every single night, and that's what we intend on doing this weekend. You guys still have a pretty good uh, mindset. I mean, obviously, Justin's out right now. You've had a couple of tough losses. or what? Where, where, where's the team mentally, would you say? Uh, still working, man, every single day. The, the mindset doesn't change. We just – we're at the point where, you know, I think we're taking steps in the right direction. We're growing. We're trying to get better every single day still. So, you know, with that being said, we're looking at what we can do more collectively. And I think we're starting to – buy into that bond that you see kind of older teams do, you know, naturally coming into the season or that you, you know, with a team that doesn't have as many new faces can be able to talk through things beforehand. Now we're going through those and we're seeing what we can do to improve as a team and each and every single one of us individually, just, you know, expanding our roles, things like that. I know you guys got stuck in Knoxville for a pretty long time. The other night. What, what did you do at the gym? I think you were there for about four hours after the game. What did you guys do to pass the time and just kind of what was that like getting back at, you know, probably didn't get back to your house till close to 4 a.m.? Well, I mean, from being in Knoxville, man, you know, that's as close as I'm pretty much going to get being back to Ohio, man, other than Lexington and uh, Van or Nashville when we play Vanderbilt. So, you know, I was able to have some people come down and see me play and I was able to spend a little bit more time with them. So, you know, blessing in disguise a bit, you know, I was able to, go back and watch over the game a couple times, you know, reflect a little bit on what we could have did better to pull the game out. And as well as, you know, just, you know, give you an extra little bit of time to think, man, and just hope that we can get back safely. In that moment, you know, right after the game, you don't want to harp on it too much, you know. You just want to kind of get back on your travel schedule and just get back home as soon as you can, get back rested did, up. Did you have some family there? I uh, actually did have some uh, family, some close friends that I used to go to school with, as well as some family, yes. Okay, I got a couple more. I'll give it back to, to Magic Mike. <laughs> you were, uh, you were muted. He didn't hear you. Nate? Uh, nothing. <clears throat> no, I got nothing until uh, till, till Coach wants one. Scotty? Hey, Jalen, I know a lot of people view J.D. as a, a scorer, and, and rightfully so, but how big of a plus can he be defensively when he's engaged? He seems like he kind of has a knack for, you know, deflection, steals, and, you know, even blocking a few shots, at, even at 6-1. Uh, he's a great two-way player, man, all around. And just, you know, when he taps into that and really holds himself accountable as a defensive uh, stopper, you know, that he can be and puts the effort both on both ends, which he normally does, too, not saying he doesn't or anything. 
But when he really locks in on it, man, he can be just as good a defender as anybody I know. Hutch? Yeah, Jalen, what did you see out of Vance Jackson on Wednesday? And is that maybe something you could see him, him building off of moving forward? I mean, that's the Vance I've come to know with the way he works, you know, and, you know, in the, in the time we could play pickup in the summer, you know, with the whole COVID thing, it wasn't too long. But, you know, the times where we could see each other play and then just, you know, watching him as a player before we came here and just seeing the film on him when I was considering coming here, that's the player that I've come to see him as, you know, a veteran now, but then, you know, still a scorer, a shooter, guy that puts a lot of pressure on the defense and just – knows the game, has a pretty good feel for the game all around. Tom. Janet, I'm wondering about you guys from a confidence level offensively and, and particularly for yourself too, your mid-range game seemed to be on in the last game. Um, just, you know, referring back to the work we put in all the time, man, and just really like a whole lot of film watching, just seeing how teams are guarding us, seeing, you know, now that we have a pretty good body of work with, you know, the first – quarter or third of the season, I should say, you know, being out the way. So just taking upon that and taking the sample size we do have and paying attention to, you know, where our spots are, where my spots are in particular, and just where I can help the team be successful in any way I can. The 20 turnovers, I'm sure, weren't what you guys wanted the other night. Um, do you attribute that to anything in particular? And how much better you need to get there? Uh, it's definitely something you can't score the ball when you're giving it away. So something we have to get better at, and it'll come with time. We're still working through some kinks throughout our offense. And when I say kinks, we just have to be tighter with the ball, you know, pay more attention to detail. In my case, you know, I'm a point guard, so I just have to make sure that's a point of emphasis I keep on. Obviously not harp on it because, you know, you don't want to be out there overthinking the game, but definitely taking those opportunities we had to score on those possessions and just capitalizing all the way into them. Thanks, Jalen. Mm -hmm. Mickey. Yeah, Jalen Musk said that you guys, the seniors, you know, it's unlikely that you guys return. So how are you feeling about, you know, the senior season that you're putting together and you're, you're shooting better, uh, I think, than you have in your career, at least through this many games in the SEC? Um, honestly, just I feel like I, I could be a lot better. I still want to just continue to get better every single day. Like you said, being a senior, I, I've been through a few seasons, and, you know, you want to be playing your best basketball right around March, you know, right towards the end of February and just be moving like this in the upward direction steadily just so I'll be able to be playing my best basketball during championship season and around the NCAA tournament. So that's just something I want to comp uh, continue to improve on. <clears throat> Alyssa. Hey, Jalen, as you get ready for Georgia, um, what do you know about this team? What have you guys learned in this short amount of time, obviously, they're coming off an uh, overtime loss to LSU, so they're still hungry for their first SEC win. Um, I know that these guys like to push the, play, the push the pace. They like to score in a hurry, man, and score a bunch of baskets. So defensively, that's going to be a point of emphasis for us is getting back in transition, stopping the ball early. I know they got some quick guards as well as some very athletic wings and bigs that can run the floor really well. So. We're going to have to get back and build our defense, get a wall built, as well as, you know, just try to make them and keep them in the half court as much as we can. Try to put as many bodies in front of them and make them score on our set defense as much as we can. Bob? Uh, Jalen, I don't, I don't know if he'd guard Keir, the guy who got 25 the other night. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right, or Wheeler. Um, but they both have pretty good stats. Well, what, what's your take on those two guys specifically? Um, from what I know so far, man, I know Wheeler's an excellent guard, man. He can uh, handle the ball going both ways. I know he's lightning fast, man. And both of those guys can honestly give guys wind burns. You know, as far as just you have to be able to keep them under control when you're guarding them one-on-one, -on -one, and you have to be able to get back on the ball when it comes to ball screens. I know Kier's an excellent shooter. Both of them can put the ball in the basket at an excellent rate. So just, you know, trying to make those guys get tough ones, make their attempts tough and their looks tough early on and just try to carry that on throughout the rest of the game. Don't give them too many second chance opportunities. Yeah, I'm not the hippest guy. I'm, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead and finish. I'm sorry. 
No, that's all good. Go ahead. Okay. That was all I said, I'm not the hippest guy. Wind burns. When you say that, you mean they can blow by you, right? That's not a term I'm familiar with. Uh, actually, that's a term coach has been using a little bit too. So just, you know, something that, you know, has been fresh on my mind from the scouting report and just things that we've been putting together to try to stop, uh, slow those guys down a little bit. And I'm sure you guys can't wait to get Justin Smith back, but it looks like he'll be out a little while longer at least. How do you think – this will be your third game without him. How do you think you guys are adjusting – to not, not having, you know, Justin, I guess. Well, early on, you know, we're still working through it. You saw a couple lineup changes that we've had to do. When it came to Missouri, we gave, you know, one of our best 50-50 uh, ball guys, getters that I've ever seen in Debo Davis, you know, a good shot at, you know, starting and just try to put his stamp on the game. Last game, we brought uh, Jalen Williams into the lineup as a, you know, longer big that can definitely rebound. And so, you know, from not having any, we've learned how to, rebound better we've adapted to playing against bigger teams and making sure we all hold ourselves accountable to boxing out and having a community effort on the glass so I think that's you know some of the some of the things that we have been able to improve on as well as Justin was one of the guys on our team he's a veteran you know you expect it but he had a good eye for and you know great basketball IQ for moving the ball he's done a great job while he's been out you know helping with the younger guys and helping us with our offense, just getting the ball moved side to side with our shot selection as well, and just being a great voice on the bench and the sideline and the practice when you can. And that's got one more, if it's okay. Um, you know, I know this is your first season with Desi. He's had a couple rough games, but you know, he's a guy that sort of had a, you know, a couple rough games here and there, and then he really bounces back. What, what, what are you seeing from Desi? And just uh, what, how do you think he'll do after a couple tough, tough games? His work ethic doesn't change, man. That's one thing about Desi. He's, he's a consistent guy. And, you know, this isn't his first go-around, you know. Second or third year guy, bad, bad games are going to happen. You can't – or off nights, I shouldn't even say bad games. You just got to find your way to be able to continue to put your stamp on the game. And I think Desi's more than capable of doing that, and I expect him to. With the upcoming schedule we have, we're going to need him. And, you know, he knows that we're going to need him. And he's all he's a guy that's all about the team, man, and he'll make whatever sacrifices it is, and he'll – play his butt off every single minute that he's out there. I have no doubt in my mind. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jalen. Thank you, Jalen. Appreciate your time.